question from Des is, I like the chill out music and notice that dancers seem to move differently to those in the main room. I think it's silk. Why should I do the classes? Um, I've actually got a question that people have been asking me recently about why should they do classes anyway? We kind of have lots of people that, you know, you have a dance journey and you start off on your journey by learning how to do moves and then you get a bit better, you get confident in freestyle. And then what a lot of people tend to do is they kind of drift off and they stop doing classes and just do freestyles. Or if they are coming to the class nights, they kind of turn up at half past nine and just do the freestyle part. Um, I've been dancing now for 22 years. I do this every day of my life. Uh, this week alone, I have learned about 10 different things about dancing. Um, and I've probably danced more than most people around. Okay, so every single day that you're there, you're you're always going to be learning. It doesn't matter how long you've been dancing. So keep going along and do the classes. Even if it's a beginner's class, you think I've done this a billion times, it gives you a chance to work on your basics. Okay, so first of all, do classes. You will always learn something. Okay, whether it's leading an inexperienced person, an inexperienced person, whatever it may be, do the class. I can't recommend them highly enough. Okay, no matter what the standard you are, you will always pick something up. But the question is, is kind of, is it different dancing to the slow music than the fast music? Generally, what people are doing when they're dancing to the slow music is they're not just dancing slow. Okay, so just very quick, first demo time. Okay, so first quick part of demoing. Okay, when you very first start to learn to dance. You'll generally dance about the 115 to 130 beats per minute, and you'll be going back, and quite often you'll be sometimes bouncing your hands. Please don't do that. Okay, but you'll be going reasonably quickly, okay, and everything will be kind of a little bit rushed as much as anything else. As you get more experienced, quite often what you want to have is more expressive music. It doesn't have to be slow to be interesting or expressive. It can be reasonable pace, okay? But generally what you then do is you then kind of feel the music much more and you would do what we call phrasing dancing, okay? So rather than everything being on the half beat and just doing that all the time, sometimes you would go across all of those beats and flow with the dance. It's the same dance, but sometimes done to slightly different timing, okay? Best way to learn how to do that type of stuff, come along to class nights. Okay. Quite often in my franchise and in my classes, I'm teaching that style anyway. I have done for 15 years. So, you know, you'll pick up that sort of styling if you do come along to the classes anyway. Okay, so do that. Second one, how do I gauge my progression in Ciroc? There's no certificate. How do I know I'm getting better? Would a private lesson help? Uh, private lessons help all of the time okay when we're teaching a class of 100 people we can look out on the floor and we can see a thousand things that could be improved on as teachers but obviously we've only got a limited amount of time if you are doing a one-to-one -one session with somebody then obviously we can do all the subtle things okay i had sid in here last time he's not appearing this week i know i'm as disappointed as you are okay but i spoke about the fact of doing a neck duck Okay, and about the fact that if you place the hand on this part of the lady's shoulder or the follow shoulder, the lady's going to stay relatively on the spot. The higher up, the less you're going to impact with the momentum. Therefore, when they do a neck duck and they roll the head underneath your arm, they'll continue to go in a straight line if your hand's up nice and high. If it's down low, they're going to stay much more on the spot. That type of thing, the feeling of those, you can cover over in private lessons. You can't really do too much of that in an actual class we can mention it but actually getting the feeling right and obviously if you're doing a private lesson whether you're a lead or a follow you will be dancing with an expert all of the teachers offer private lessons if you want interest on that please do pm me i'm happy to give you the details about all of that type of stuff okay but yes private lessons are definitely the way to do it okay. how do you gauge your progression in Ciroc? i suppose that's why lots of people do competitions okay which is why we have the uh, competition tips coming up very shortly for you okay um but ask people, ask people how you're getting on, ask the teachers, okay? So that's always a nice gauging point to see how you're getting on. Ask other people how you're dancing, okay? But uh, if anybody wants feedback on that, I'm more than happy to tell them how they're doing, okay? Um, and the next part that uh, Des asked was, as a social dancer, what can I learn from social dancing? Sorry, from competition dancers, I should say. So I'll rephrase it. As a social dancer, what can I learn from competition dancers? First of all, the main thing that competition dancers do is they perform. And that's the main thing you will learn. Okay, social dancing can sometimes be quite interactive between the two of you. What a competition dancer is trying to do is say, look how good I am to everybody else. Okay, so it's all about that ability to perform, okay, at that point there. So that's kind of the main thing I'd say you get from competition dancing. Right, on to then the actual competition tips. Now, end of last year, September's podcast. If you want to go onto the YouTube channel, you can then have a look 
at, sorry, excuse me a second. Okay, you can then have a look at the first part of the competition tips that I did. I'm going to cover over them very, very quickly, okay? And then I'll move on to the second part. So excuse me while I scroll up, okay? So what I said before is, regarding competition dancing, I say September's podcast from last year available on YouTube, all right? And that is pre-choreographed moves. Try not to do them, okay? If it looks like you're doing a pre-choreographed move, as a judge, I will mark you down on it, okay? That's not to say you haven't got moves that are practiced, but if you're doing something where you're both doing the same thing and it's nothing to do with the music whatsoever, I look at it and I go, it's a pre-choreographed move, I'm gonna move on to the next couple. I'm quite harsh on that, but that's the way it goes. Okay, second part, okay? This is a really key one. Capture the judge's attention, okay? So again, I'll very quickly demo this part, and I'll do the same demo as I did on the last podcast, okay? And that is, if, for instance, you do a lean and you get the judge's attention, da -da, look how amazing I am, and then you lead your partner out, and then you end up doing an octopus, okay? The bit that the judge has seen is that you've caught their attention by doing the lean. The bit then that the judge is watching is you doing an octopus, okay? Nothing wrong with an octopus, it's not gonna get you through to the next round though, okay? So you've always got to think, I've done a lean, where hey, what shall I do next? Let's do a scroll, for instance, into another lean. Then the judge is watching you doing that particular move, not the octopus, okay? So there's that part. Second bit, where is the front, okay? So at the moment, I'm performing to yourself, hello, okay? However, if I turn around this way, lovely view of my rear end, okay? And I'm doing the lean that way, that's not really going to be performing to the judges, so you need to know where the front is, okay? Next bit, start and finish the dance. Always a starting point, okay? Get on with it. Always say to people, get on with it. Take your time, listen to the music, let it know what it's, let you know, let the music tell you what to do, okay? But at the same time, if you're doing an octopus and a high first and a man spin for the first 45 seconds, you're not capturing the judge's attention at all, okay? So try and start off with one of your better moves, should we say, okay? Once you've got the timing of the music. Dance near your supporters. You know, if you've got a big load of people that are supporting you, don't go to the other side of the room. Dance their supporters. It's like football teams playing at home. You're going to be more successful if you've got people cheering you on. It makes you feel better about yourself, okay? Um, list your moves to each genre. So before the actual competition starts, Make sure you know what your moves are, okay, that you plan on doing in those particular genres. If you are doing more of the advanced and the open categories, you often get six different genres that you are going to perform to, okay, you'll know them in advance. So make sure you've got appropriate moves to do with that. I say all of this is done in much more detail in September 2018's podcast, okay. Clothing, try and make sure that you match in some way, okay? We get photos sent through to us all the time saying, what do you think of this outfit? What do you think of that outfit? Some of them are great, some of them, you know, it looks like you're going shopping at Tesco, okay? Or wherever you shop, okay? So try and make sure that you are doing something that makes you stand out from the crowd in clothing as well. And last but not least on the old stuff, and that is try and have a connection, not just with yourself, with your supporters and with the judges as well. It's not social dancing. Competition dancing is not social dancing. You're trying to get through. You're trying to be better than everybody else on the dance floor. That's why it's called a competition. Right, so on to some new parts, okay? So some different tips for you regarding competition stuff. First one, and this is what I see quite a lot, enjoy yourself, okay? Yes, it's stressful, yes, you're under pressure, but actually, if you look like you're enjoying yourself on the dance floor, then I promise you, the judges will then look at you and go, oh, like that, okay? So really try and enjoy yourself as much as you can. It's still a day in your life, so still try and enjoy every single day that you've got, okay? This one's very key as well. I, I see a lot of dancers that they're dancing, and then they're actually almost thinking about something different. So if they're you know, doing, an advanced category, for instance, but they're also thinking they're in the final of the lucky dip and they're not quite in the moment. So just concentrate on that one piece of music, your partner, and doing that one dance at that time. It's called being mindful, okay? So try and focus on what you're doing at that moment in time. Nothing else matters. You're on a competition dance floor. That's all that matters for those three and a half minutes, okay? Uh, next one. If you are doing the Ciroc X category, which I know takes place in some of the Ciroc um, competitions, then try and make sure that, A, yes, you know the eight moves that are in there, okay? But when we judge the Ciroc X competition, what we're looking for is actually something slightly different, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you do a different move, but think about the variations of the moves as they've been combined, okay? So if you could justifiably say, you know, 
I'm doing a Colombian as one of the ones this year into a high first mambo. That's pretty much, you can do almost any footwork if I'm honest with you, okay? Because all of those bits of footwork could be combined to choose those things, okay? So try and make sure you're combining different moves to almost create new ones to some degree. Don't tell them I said that, okay? But try and do something that makes you stand out from the crowd. If you think about it, if there's 20 cups on the floor, all doing the same moves, all doing the same styling, then it's very difficult to figure out who is doing the best. Now, last year at Southwest Champs, okay, end of July, we'll plug you there, Ivan and Kate, okay, do book onto it. It's a very, very friendly competition. That's a great competition as well, okay. Last year's winners at Ciroc X, can't remember what their names, I'm afraid, but the reason they won more than anything for me is, you know, the tips from today, they looked like they enjoyed themselves. They did stuff musically as well, so they just applied the moves to the music and they enjoyed themselves. And that was the main thing for me that got them their first place, okay? So try and think if you're doing Stock X, try and do something that's slightly musical and makes it look stand out from the crowd, okay? Now the next part is I, I talk a lot about what I call my third theory, okay? So in dancing, it used to be that man leads a dance, ladies lay back, think of England or wherever it may be that you're from, okay? Um, these days, ladies, I want you to take as much responsibility for making the dance work as the man does, okay? So an easy example of that is not that you're hijacking the moves all the time, but the men are going to put you into positions, okay? So for competitions, okay, as a man, let's go back to doing a normal high first lean. So I've twisted you out to the side, I bring you in, we pause, if you wish to pause, you don't have to, okay? And the men do a lean like that okay now from our perspective that's pretty much all we can do we could slightly do a couple of different bits and pieces we could lunge bigger whatever but we're quite restricted from ladies perspective you've got loads and loads of different variations you could do what's called the surfboard variation where you keep your back nice and straight take the arm out to the side you could do a back bend variation you step back and you tilt the head backwards okay you could do the arms variation you can sweep them up and round over the top i'm getting in touch with my feminine side here okay lots of different variations that you can do but that's where ladies and in a competition you can make yourselves stand out so take responsibility ladies for your part of your dancing okay it's not the man's job he'll create the moves he'll do the moves it's up to you then to try and actually go for it okay do different things that's where you can then start to lead your part of the dance okay so it's not just about the man going look how good i am ladies we want you to be as responsible so the third series that music tells you what to do for a third of it men lead for a third of it ladies lead for a third of it as well okay ish there are thereabouts right so um hello mandy so mandy just said hi richard not good enough or brave enough to enter, enter any competitions but still worth watching this love your humor thank you very much it's very kind <laughs> i do try um, so next part, and this is a really key one for me, and that is practice the music you don't like. Now, when we go dancing, okay, we listen to lots of different music, and as DJs, we try and play a mix of all different types of music. You're not always going to like every track that we play. That's impossible, okay? I love certain types of music as a DJ. I don't care what music I play regarding, for me personally, I try and look at what everybody else is on the floor, and I try and play music that's suiting the people that are there on that night, okay? Because they're the ones that are dancing, okay? It's my responsibility as a DJ to try and do that. Now, in competitions, you don't get to choose what the music is, okay? And quite often, I've had it in the past, I've danced and I've practiced and I've practiced the music that I love, and therefore I then get to a competition and they're dancing to, and I, a song comes on and you just go, oh, it's this one. Oh good, it's Blurred Lines again, okay? Or whatever the track may be, okay? I think the most interesting one at Blackpool last year is for the overs category, they played when I'm 64. Yay. Okay. Terrible tracks, some of them. Okay. But they're the ones you've got to practice to because in a competition, the organizers may think that's the world's greatest track. You look at it and you go, it's a terrible track, but that's just one of those things. You've got to get on with it. Act like you thinking, oh my word, this is the best track I've ever heard in my life. Yay. It's a competition. So you just need to act. Okay. Act it through. Make the best of that bad situation. Okay. So practice the music you don't like. That's always key. Okay. Talking about practice, a lot of people have said to me um, in the past, yeah, I, I've mucked it up now. But it'll be all right on the day. It never is. Okay. Whatever you do in practice, you will do when you are under pressure. Okay. So if you are practicing, stepping back as a lady with a bent back leg, in pressure or under pressure I should say that is what you're going to do if you step back demo time again 
for the legs. Okay, if you step back as a lady, you straighten that back leg and your hips are coming out to the side. That's a lovely position. That's what you're doing real times. If you step back and you're sinking down like this, then that's kind of how you're going to look, okay, which isn't particularly nice. So stretch back, get into that habit, and going back to the earlier part, even in a beginner's day or a beginner's class, you can practice those types of things, okay? So that's why we suggest going to all of the beginner's classes, okay? Right, a couple more bits. I'm running out of time very, very quickly, okay? Second of all, well, not second of all, last few bits. Keep hydrated, keep fueled up. It's not the day to think about whether you're on a good diet or not, okay? So make sure you are hydrated. Drink, 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 okay? That's the key part. I think there's a phrase that 20% dehyd or 10% dehydration equals 80% less performance. It's something like that. Don't quote me on that, but it's something around those lines, okay? So keep hydrated, very, very important. Keep fueled up. Good food, not just rubbish food, okay? Not just sugars, because you'll have a high and then a low, okay? Um, two more things. Don't change too much right before a competition, okay? Lots of people kind of in the week up to the competition start to panic, a bit like revising for an exam, really, and you try and cram loads and loads of stuff in just before a competition, okay? That stuff will never be in your muscle memory. What will happen is you'll revert back to what you did before, about a month before, okay? So if you're competing, it's tomorrow night, tomorrow is blackball, okay? Before the end of February, sorry, before the end of January, everything you are going to change should be changed in the month of february that's when you're practicing what you've already done okay so it should be at least a month in advance to rock champs which is the beginning of may the first sunday in may okay you want to make sure by the end of march you have finished doing whatever you're practicing okay or whatever you're changing and then just practice whatever you have learned at that point there home in those skills okay and that is going to get you there but going back to the beginning of part two of competition tips the main thing i would say is enjoy it that is the key part it is a good gauge of where you are in dancing so answering kind of jasmine's questions earlier okay it kind of give can give you some gauge of where you are at okay in regards to how you are viewed amongst your peers um enjoy 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 okay so there's competition tips part two next month's beginning of april again uh, as always this will be available as a podcast later on on itunes and spotify and if you can log into my youtube channel and subscribe that'd be great i'm now up to all of 47 subscribers so it'd be great to get to three figures at some point this year would be great okay just type in my name which is available as you can see on facebook and i do come up just subscribe to that channel you'll get all the podcasts coming up like so it'd be an edited version i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i'll see you again next month thank you very much